My name is Andrea Ticinesi, I'm a researcher at the University of Parma, and I have been asked by the Editor-in-Chief of GATT to present you the main results of our study entitled Understanding the GATT Kidney Access in Nephrogitizes. This study was entirely conducted at the Microbiome Research Hub of Parma University with the collaboration of three research groups, a clinical group, a microbiological group, and a nutritional group. The possible involvement of gut microbiota in the physiopathology of calcium oxalate kidney stones was first hypothesized several years ago after the isolation from human fecal samples of Oxalobacter formigenes. This is a bacterium able to degrade oxalate, which is the main component of calcium oxalate kidney stones, and so its presence in the human microbiome may be associated with a reduced risk of kidney stone formation. However, these physiopathological mechanisms have not been confirmed by intervention studies, and the gut microbiota composition of kidney stone formers was never investigated with next-generation sequencing techniques. So, in our study, we compared the fecal microbiota composition of 52 patients with recurring idiopathic calcium nephrolytizes and 48 stone-free healthy controls. For each of them, we collected data on kidney stone disease scores and we performed a nutritional investigation with a food frequency questionnaire. Each patient also provided a 24-hour urine sample for the determination of the urinary profile of lithogenic risk. This is a standard panel of 19 laboratory measures providing a complete picture of the physical chemical risk of lithogenic salt precipitation. And this is also the standard tool for the evaluation of the risk of kidney stone recurrences. Of course, participants provided a stool sample for microbiome analysis. We performed 16S for all subjects and also shotgun metagenomics for five stone formers and five controls. This was targeted at oxalate degrading metabolic pathways. We found that stone formers and controls were very similar for clinical and nutritional parameters, except for urinary expression of calcium and oxalate, which were higher in stone formers, and the ether intake of calcium, which was higher in controls. All these differences were highly expected given previous investigations. 16S analysis of fecal samples revealed that stone formers had a lower biodiversity than controls, and this result was confirmed at multivariate statistics, accounting for all possible confounders. We also found that stone formers had a distinct overall fecal microbiota composition than controls, even if the principal coordinate analysis plot, which you can see in this slide, did not visually retrieve evident clusters. Several bacterial species had a lower average representation in the fecal samples of stone formers. For three of them, Dorea, Enterobacter and Fecalibacterium, the lower representation was confirmed as statistically significant in a stepwise backward regression analysis model. The abundance of several taxa was significantly correlated with urinary oxalate expression, and this correlation was confirmed as statistically significant in multivariate models for five of them. We did not find any difference in the abundance of oxalobacter formigenes between stone formers and controls, which was quite unexpected. Shotgun metagenomics analysis showed that the microbiome representation of genes involved in oxalate degradation was lower in stone formers than in controls. The representation of these genes and the cumulative abundance of species harboring them were negatively correlated with urinary oxalate expression. So, we concluded that idiopathic calcium nephrolytizes was associated with the gut microbiota dysbiosis and with reduced representation of oxalate-degrading bacteria. In both stone formers and controls, the genes involved in oxalate degradation 
were harbored by microbial taxa whose oxalate degrading capacity was previously unknown. And so we believe that our findings may help to better understand the involvement of the gut kidney axis in the physiopathology of kidney stone disease. In fact, the gastrointestinal system may be much more involved in this renal disease than previously postulated. Thank you very much for your kind attention.